Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at properties and primary constructors in Kotlin. So we've seen that you can declare a class like this. Let's give it one method, which I'll call speak. And let's just do print line hello in there. And then we can create instances of this class. In other words, objects like this. Let's say val p1 equals person with round brackets. And then we can call the methods of this object. So this is like a blueprint for creating persons. And this is creating an actual individual person. Now we can associate data with objects using something called properties. So normally in the real world, every person has a name. So how about if we say that every person here should be able to have a name? We can do that using something called the primary constructor. So after the name of the class here, we can put an open and close round brackets. And in there, we can effectively declare variables. And those variables become properties that are part of each object. So let's write here val name of type string. Now, when I actually create a person, I have to give it a name. It's a bit like calling a function. So let's say that this person here is called Bob. And what use is that? Well, this property can then be used in methods, that is functions that belong to the class. So here, for example, I could say, hello, I'm dollar name. And when I run this, you can see it now says, hello, I'm Bob. And you can use val or var here, depending on whether you're going to need to change this after it's initialized here. So we could create another person. Let's just do that. Let's create a P2, or I should really call this person one and person two. These variable names are so short that they're a bit cryptic, but it's just a little program. So I'll overlook it. Let's create a person called Claire. And then when we call the method speak on the Claire object that we create by doing this, Claire is going to say, hello, I'm Claire. So you can see that this basically says that every object that we create of this person class, every particular instance of this blueprint, which we call a class, is going to have a property called name, which is going to have a different value usually for every different object that you create. Although we could certainly create two objects with the name Bob or whatever. But the point is that every object gets its own copy of this property. This bit here, this bit of syntax is called the primary constructor. If you've seen Java, that has only one kind of constructor. It's a little bit different in Kotlin, and it's going to take at least a couple, maybe three videos to fully explain that. You can put the constructor keyword in there, and it doesn't make any difference. So in this kind of a case, it's actually optional. There are cases where it's not optional. We'll look at those later on. But since we don't need it here, let's just remove that. So again, in Java, if you know Java, in the constructor, you can actually run code. And Kotlin handles that differently. We'll look at it in a subsequent video shortly. Now, there is a slight variation on this because sometimes you want to modify a property using just an expression when you initialize it. And I'll show you what I mean. So up here within the class, but outside of any of the methods, I could declare a property. Let's have val or it could be var, just depends what you need. Let's have val age of type int. Now you can see I've got red underlining here, and that's because it has to be initialized. And that's going to be true even if I make this a var. We could initialize it directly here. And this is useful if you happen to need a variable that's shared between methods. But this syntax by itself doesn't give you a way to initialize the variable when you create the object. Let's change this back to a val, just because we don't need a var here. So up here, we can write age colon int, that's the type of it. And we can then initialize this using this. So let's say equals age. So this is kind of a strange syntax, which I'm not 
really seen in any other programming language, I think. So notice this is just exactly like this, except that we don't use the val or var keyword. We use that only here. And this here actually refers to this variable from the primary constructor. The value in doing this is that we have the opportunity to modify age if we want to. For example, if I wanted to add 10 years to everyone's age, I could just make them smoke a packet of cigarettes a day, or here I could just add on 10. And since we've specified age as a variable in a primary constructor, I now have to specify that when I create objects. So let's say that Bob is going to be 52 and Claire, let's make her 39. And let's output the age here in this speak method. And you can also, of course, change properties in methods if you've used var to declare those properties. But let's say here, I'm dollar age years old. And we'll run this and take a look at it. And you can see it says, hello, I'm Bob, I'm 62 years old. And I'm Claire, I'm 49 years old. And by the way, you can give these default values. So I could specify, for example, equals 20. And then when I create a person, let's just have person three here. And then we can miss off the age when we create that person. Let's run that. So it's going to say Vic is 30 years old. Why? Because I didn't specify an age when I created Vic. So age initially ended up being 20. But then in this property here, the actual declaration of the age property, we use that age from the primary constructor and we added 10 to it. So if you're completely new to this, try out this kind of property first. It's usually probably going to be the most useful. But then once you think you've got the hang of that, have a go at this as well. And remember, you don't need and you can't use the val or var keyword here if you're just creating a variable in a primary constructor that initializes a property later on. It's going to seem complicated at first, but once you try this stuff out, it really gets a lot simpler quickly. There is quite a bit more to say about Kotlin constructors and properties. We're going to get onto that. The fact that I'm calling this a primary constructor implies there is a secondary constructor, of course. We'll take a look at that later on. And by the way, I just want to show you, I discovered something really nice in IntelliJ IDEA that I didn't actually know about. If you go to the view menu and appearance, you can go to enter Zen mode, where it's it, it's actually gone full screen now. It's going to be off the recording area of the video, but it's gone into full screen mode and there are no footers or toolbars or anything to distract me. But I'm going to go out of Zen mode here. So I think that's a really nice feature that I've often wanted in editors. But of course, then you have to know the shortcuts or else you have to leave Zen mode if you actually want to do anything else other than write code. I suppose it's intended for seasoned programmers with IntelliJ IDEA who know all the shortcuts, which I don't. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.